think uh, uh, you did mention uh, about uh, GRD induced cuff. Uh, I think it's almost like you know one in two patients, almost close to forty percent of the patients. I think uh, you know uh, general practitioners would be uh, diagnosing because of GRD induced cuff. So. Uh, when the incidence of this is so high, I think probably in that connection, uh, one of the uh, uh, viewer is asking that should routine use of anti-acid drugs in uh, such patients or in adults with chronic cough uh, is, uh, you know, should be, uh, you know, recommended or not? Uh, I would not recommend that. I'll tell you what, what the doctor should do is I have given those two questionnaires. One is a GRD questionnaire and one is the airway cough, uh, airway reflux questionnaire. Administer those questionnaires. And if the score is higher than what I have mentioned, then you should suspect it and then treat it. Don't treat all your patients by default with uh, with medication because then, you know, 50% of the times you'll go wrong, which is quite a big proportion, isn't it? So the treatment for GRD-induced cough is with proton pump inhibitors. Remember that uh, it takes at least two to three, sometimes even four weeks for the effect of the proton pump inhibitors to start. So uh, if you made a if you made a diagnosis of uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease induced cough, uh, proton pump inhibitors will not relieve the cough in one week. It doesn't. You have to give them a long duration of treatment. You have to wait, wait for at least two weeks or three weeks, sometimes even four weeks. If the patient has not responded at all, even for up to four weeks, then you say, okay then this is not GERD cough. Because four weeks I've tried, no patient has got no relief at all. If the patient says, doctor, after it's taken me four weeks, but my cough has gone, then you continue that photon pump inhibitor for a long period of time. That's how you treat it. Thanks, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for addressing this question. Uh, sir, you did mention about, uh, while you were talking about uh, in depth about the investigations that need to be done, uh, systematically, especially you did mention uh, a lot about uh, the uh, you know spirometry and the iOS. Uh, I think there's one question uh, which uh, one of the viewers is asking uh, for a patient on chronic cuff with normal chest X-ray and physical examination. Should chest CT scan be routinely performed? Should chest CT scan? CT. Uh, so patient comes with a dry cough, has got a normal chest X-ray. The next test I would do is a spirometry. If the spirometry shows normal, then I would uh, then, then I would then go ahead with doing a CT scan. But if the spirometry shows presence of obstructive airway disease, then there's no point in doing a CT scan. So that's the algorithm that I would follow. Right, sir. Thank you so much, uh, sir. Another question. I think uh, there's one question uh, that how can we get a confirmed diagnosis of Vocal cord dysfunction, is it a laryngoscopy considered to be the diagnostic standard or a yes. simple spirometry can also uh, help to diagnose this? No, the gold standard diagnostic tool for vocal cord dysfunction is a direct laryngoscopy. So it, you have to refer the patient to an ENT surgeon. You cannot make that diagnosis. However, having said that, there are certain shapes on the spirometry graph, which I, I could have shown uh, if I had known that somebody was interested in vocal cord dysfunction. But the inspiratory loop, so in spirometry, I told you everything about the expiratory loop, the triangular shaped one. Right. Vocal cord dysfunction, the inspiratory loop, which is the lower one, that gives a, gives a very classical shape uh, that you see in a vocal cord dysfunction. So you can suspect uh, if you find that kind of a shape of the inspiratory curve, you can suspect that this patient is likely to have vocal cord dysfunction. What I generally do is take a nice detailed history. I do spirometry. My expiratory curves are normal, perfectly normal. Inspiratory curve, I see some flattening over here. Then I would suspect vocal cord dysfunction. See if I can refer the patient to an ENT surgeon for confirming my diagnosis. Or then you might start treatment. So the treatment is essentially counseling, uh, psychotherapy, and so on. There's no medicine that works for vocal cord dysfunction. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for addressing this question. I think, sir, uh, next question is with respect to the management. You did mention about uh, the LPRAs, uh, you know, and not that much role when it comes to a patient presenting with AR. But what of those patients who are having a cuff variant uh, asthma? Because of asthma, a short-term trial of this LPRAs will help in those patients. 
yes, you can do a trial of uh, LTRAs in patients suspected with cough variant asthma, especially those who have a cough plus allergic gravitis. Then uh, the anti leukotrienes may uh, show you some benefit. But if you're suspecting a cough variant asthma, the drug of choice invariably is an inhaled corticosteroid, not anti leukotrienes. You want to use anti leukotrienes? Use anti leukotrienes as an add on drug. But don't use it as a replacement for inhaled corticosteroids. I think that is an important message that I would like to send. So, uh, anti leukotrienes, good, useful add on, not replacement for inhaled corticosteroids, even in cough variant asthma. Thanks. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think, sir, another very relevant question I think one of the viewers is asking is that you did mention about the drug induced uh, cough, especially the uh, ACE inhibitors. Sir. Uh, so, one of the viewers is asking that when can a physician stop that and for how long actually? So, <clears throat> a patient has come to you with a dry cough for a long time. Uh, you ask the patient, are you on any medication? The patient says, yes, doctor, I'm on an ACE inhibitor. Now, that doesn't mean that you should rule out, that you should not rule out other conditions. The patient may have other causes for a dry cough. So you take a detailed history anyways, which is important. If in the detailed history, you cannot identify any other cause for the dry cough, you have ruled out all other conditions. And the only condition that now remains is an ACE inhibitor induced cough then you stop that ACE inhibitor. Because if you don't stop that ACE inhibitor, the patient will continue to cough for a long period of time, make his life miserable. So stop the ACE inhibitor and ask the patient, we need to replace your ACE inhibitor with other drugs. Could be calcium, could be, you know, could be, uh, there's so many other drugs that can be used for treatment of hypertension and congestive heart failure without ACE inhibitors.